Hi and welcome to another piano review here on the Mirror and Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. Today we're going to be investigating and enjoying the Estonia L168. This is their smallest model and it's the first time I've had a chance to really soak myself in this instrument. I've always been a fan, both in the upright and the grand range, of really well done smaller instruments because the intimacy that you can feel uh, from the piano, it's not you know four feet away, you're right there in the midst of the tonal creation. Uh, and certainly this piano is giving me lots and lots of that. So we're gonna be talking about the sound and describing what it is that I'm hearing, talking a little bit about the technical details of the instrument, uh, a very quick chat about the action, uh, but mostly we just want you to hear and enjoy the instrument just like we are. So we've got it mic'd up with uh, two uh, large condenser microphones, and other than that, straight audio to you, no other alterations of any kind. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on the channel, we would really appreciate if you subscribed and hit that notification bell at any point in the video. Now, now it's even better. But uh, once you've uh, you know been entertained and you found this useful, uh, please do become a regular member of our community because we'd love you to come back and see us again. So without further ado, let's get started with the Estonia L168 right away. So Estonia is still a brand and a, a piano brand, musical instrument that I am very much still getting used to and getting to know. Every single manufacturer who puts this much time and energy into design um, has a depth of relationship that you can develop uh, with it, uh, which you know is is something you don't get on. Uh, lower level instruments. Um, you know, this is like diving into a really amazing wine or uh, getting to know a cuisine that's executed at the highest level. There's all of this nuance around it, uh, and it's exciting uh, to peel back the layers and get to know it. And, and like I said, Estonia is a brand uh, that I haven't spent nearly the same number of hours in front of as, say, a Yamaha or a Steinway or a Kauai or you know all of the usual spec all the usual suspects um, and it's a piano that almost gives you more the less you try and force out of it uh, and this is what I'm, I'm starting to to realize that there is a give and take that there's a, a reciprocation uh, with playing in Estonia and really finding the truest, most beautiful sweet spots on this piano, it's a little bit different than some of the other more modern uh, concert pianos. Not that this isn't modern, but um, if you uh, kind of take a look at the uh, top, top, top concert pianos of the day, and there's you know four or five that, even though we could quibble over which one is in first, second, third place, everybody generally would agree that the Fazioli 278, the Seebeckstein uh, 282, the Hamburg Steinway D, uh, you know, your Busendorfer, either Imperial or, you know, 280 VC. These are the instruments uh, that are deserving of top consideration. And they all have a few things in common, and one of them is that they are trying for the maximum dynamic range and the maximum tonal palette that you possibly can, and the more power and the more force that you put into the piano, just the, the greater color and explosion that you get out of it. So it's like it's really uh, a performance focused uh, instrument or paradigm. And the Estonia is just not going for that. Or at least it doesn't seem like it to me. Um, when I'm playing this Estonia at a very low, and as we said in the introduction, this is a 168 model, so this is a baby grand. And I have to say, I generally have a soft spot for smaller, really well-executed baby grands, generally speaking. I know there'll be some people who say 168's not, can't really be considered a baby grand anymore, but I don't know. To me, it still feels babyish. 
you know, this is uh, very much uh, in line with, say, the um, Bechstein L167, which I uh, love as well. That, that piano is magic. But there's a certain uh, amount of this that also reminds me a little bit of, like, say, the Mason and Hamlin B, um, although the playing behavior is different. But the tonal closeness that you get on an instrument like this, I really like. It's the same reason I like some uprights. You just you feel so close to the center of the action. Um, but back to my first point about uh, this give and take with the instrument and it not being totally geared towards this gigantic explosion of tone. It's, it's a lot more nuanced around the corners. And there's this wonderful bloom that occurs, uh, particularly in the mid and upper mid range of the piano, where the sustain just goes on for days. It's still there. The way that this soundboard preserves energy, you know, it may not be as receptive to these huge immediate bursts of energy, but what it gives up in that immediate like um, violence you know of a huge triple fortissimo attack you get back in all of this extra shade after the fact and it completely changes how you play the piano that's gorgeous There's a commenter on another video who's, who is asking for, um, in a very positive, supportive way, asking for even a greater level of uh, analytical breakdown in terms of what makes tone tone you know, on a piano, a certain piano. And I believe the comment was related to another Estonia. Well, um, I played this through a, a very accurate EQ just to even see what was happening. And there's a few things that um, immediately differentiate this from uh, any other piano I've played. For one, the prominence and sustain of the fundamental tone, the first partial, uh, is really unlike any other piano that I play uh, today. You have a lot of instruments where that primary uh, attack, uh, and then as it starts to decay, the, the, the kind of the principal tone, the main tone, if we're talking organs, your eight foot, um, really drops off fairly quickly, but then what you're left with is this nice sustaining shimmer. Uh, and that shimmer is, is actually what pushes forward a lot. It gives a lot of the color of the piano, but your fundamental uh, is gone relatively quickly. What you notice on this is it's almost the opposite. What you're left with is this huge uh, spike uh, with your fundamental tone, and that's actually what carries on. It, the, the energy is preserved at that frequency really, really well. And that's, that owes to the scale design of this piano and, and the shaping of the soundboard, which is, which is a little different than most other pianos. They, they really do it in a flattened way, and they create uh, surface tension uh, differently by how uh, they bend and dry uh, the ribs and attach them to the soundboard. There's a bunch of stuff on their website. You can go and check that out. I'm not going to bore you with it now, but it's quite fascinating what they've done with the soundboard and the ribs. So all of that contributes to this really prominent fundamental tone that doesn't decay. 
Um, the other thing is the proportion of it to the next partials looks much different. When you take a look at something like a Shiguru Kawai, there's this very um, uh, shallow drop off. Uh, it you know it almost looks like Wi-Fi bars. You've got like your fundamental, then your your uh, your second partial, and your third partial, fourth partial, fifth partial, sixth partial, uh, and you'll like a Hamburg Steinway looks very similar to that as well. You've got this nice even step down. When you get over to the Estonia, you have this huge fundamental, and then a much deeper uh, step down into your second, third, fourth, and then it levels off. And then you have this uh, interesting spike at about the sixth partial, which is a very bell-like quality. And it just makes you want to be a choir. You know, your, your hands turn into a choir behind this piano. Funny, it reminds me of uh, Copeland in a way, you know, this big kind of Americana. Or Eric Whitaker, you know, with the choral works and all of this gorgeous, you know, shimmer. makes a very voice-like quality because even though all of our voices have these other extra partials, uh, the, the primary tone coming out of our voices, of course, the, is, is that first partial. So let's break this down by range. As I, because I could kind of wax on poetic about this for a little while. Uh, in the lower range of this piano, you've got a gorgeous clarity, which is quite unlike other instruments in this size. piano resonates with that tone. It's extremely energetic, you know, and there's an inertia to it. It doesn't feel nimble, but it doesn't feel clumsy. It's just very present. hear a little bit of the transition through the break. Uh, very hard to get that nailed on, on grand pianos this short. But what's interesting about the Estonia is that's more about the switch and bridge than it is about the switch and copper. So their transition from steel to copper is super smooth. The D is that last steel string. And that's the first copper string. As we move up into the mid range,
is more of a blended range. I'm not like necessarily in love with any one of the individual spoken notes in this range. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just that's not the sweet spot of this piano. As we continue up, As soon as you get I uh, kind of up just past middle C. Now you're getting into the just the the money. So, wonderful. I mean, honestly, you just want to play triads all day. Up into the top range, the top octave and a half to me has much less That's one spot where I would love to have a little more color because I'm just so used to it out of a modern piano. But looking at this, this is quite intentional. I mean, you can see that they've tackled the uh, treble section of uh, the bridge differently. Um, the, where the bridge is pinned, there's a wider space for the, the string to be in full contact with the bridge. They've notched the bridge on the bottom. And you do get this gorgeous sustain. But what I find is the dynamic range in your upper, uh, your upper octave is just a little bit limited where you could really push that in some other pianos. Whew, but man, oh man. Just let the piano do its thing though up there and it's, you know, it's like listening to a painting. In terms of action, this piano uh, is really nicely regulated at the factory. Uh, this is a very uh, conventional feeling European um, action. You know, this is a full Renner action, so exactly the same componentry builders as you know what's going into most of the very, very highest end instruments. Uh, in Europe.
And another thing that they put an inordinate amount of focus on is the finishing and the cabinetry of, the, of this piano. Multiple, uh, you know, a joinery uh, going on where the beams connect with the rim. Uh, and you can look at the underside of this instrument and be just as impressed as uh, the top of the instrument. Uh, very much reminds me of Fazioli in a lot of ways when I'm looking at the quality of the cabinetry and the quality of the uh, joinery, um, both things that uh, the, uh, each company respectively takes quite seriously. It's interesting to see though on the Estonia because let's remember, because I didn't make mention of this at any point in the video, that the Estonia is available for price points much more associated with kind of the mid-range of the European market. But this is not a mid-range piano. I mean, when you hear this kind of, ah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it, it really, for a mid-range sustain like that, it does not get any better than that. There you go. If you happen to be in the market for a piano of this size, where is this, 5'5", five 5.6", five, five something like that, and you are somebody who loves having the piano talk to you instead of you being the one to sit around shouting at your piano, um, this might just be a very compelling musical partner for you to investigate. Just in the space of doing this review, I've honestly found new nooks and crannies in this instrument that I'm loving. So, chances are you might too. If this is the first time that you have come across our channel, we would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can come back and see more piano videos. We're always making them, we love making them, uh, but it gets so much more fun when we have people participate with comments and just knowing that you're there as a viewer is really cool. So please do come back, see us again. My name is Stu Harrison, this has been Miriam Pianos. Take care and have a great day.